call on Government Order of the Day No. 7. Naitai Kitamaki Claim Settlement Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Christopher Finlinson. Mr Speaker, I move that the Naitai Kitamaki Claim Settlement Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Māori Affairs Committee to consider the bill. It's a real pleasure to have reached this stage to present the Naitai Kitamaki uh, Claim Settlement Bill to the House. Naitai Kitamaki are an iwi centred in Clevedon with interests in Tamaki, Hauraki and Tikapa Moana and are members both of the Hauraki and the Tamaki collectives. Since 1989, Naitaiki Tamaki have sought to negotiate the full and final settlement of their historic claims. The Ropatu claims of Naitaiki Tamati uh, were settled through the 1995 Waikato Ropatu settlement, but it took until 2010 for comprehensive settlement negotiations to be commenced. The Crown and Naitai Kitamaki signed a, an agreement in principle in 2011 and a comprehensive deed of settlement in November 2015. And I acknowledge at once it's taken a while to get to this stage, and I regret that uh, because of the close interconnectedness with the Hauraki matters that aren't quite settled. But I, I have the impression that Naitai Ki Tamaki are a forgiving lot, and I'm pretty pleased that uh, uh, we've reached the stage uh, now. To those representatives of the iwi here today, no my haere mai, ena iwi, ena reo, ena mana, tena, tena rakoto katoa. It's a real pleasure to have you in the gallery at last for the first reading of this legislation. It's obviously a special day for you and the iwi as we take the penultimate steps towards resolving this long-standing treaty grievance. Can I acknowledge those members of the iwi who have passed on during this long journey and who could not be here today? There are always uh, those people who have stood behind the claim for many, many years, but when the time comes for the legislation, uh, they have passed on. I commend the negotiators, the trustees, and all those who worked behind the scenes for their tireless work in reaching this point. Um, I say it every first reading, but it applies to every uh, settlement. The immense sacrifices that have been made by the people of, of this iwi to hold the Crown to account for the grievances it has caused should and will never be forgotten. Mr Speaker, as I do, I will recount the history because it's important to read into the permanent record of the House just what happened and why we're here today. The Crown has acknowledged through the deed of settlement its failure to deal with the long-standing grievances of Naitai Kitamaki in an appropriate way. From 1840, the Crown and the Iwi sought to establish mutually beneficial relationships and transacted land that contributed to the development of Auckland and this country as a whole. The Crown did not always protect the interests in those transactions and breached its duties uh, towards Naitaiki Tamaki with respect to lands in Tamaki, Eastern Wairoa, Papakura uh, and the inner Tikapa Moana Islands, including, of course, Mututapu. The Crown broke its promise to Naitaiki Tamaki that it would not confiscate the land of those who did not take up arms against the Crown during the Waikato War. It indiscriminately confiscated a 51,000 acre block in East Wairoa under the New Zealand Settlements Act in which the iwi had interests. Around the time the Compensation Court called for Māori to register claims in respect of East Wairoa, a Naitaiki Tamaki Rangatira, Anaru Makifora, accompanied the commander of the Waikato native contingent to Tikawiti on business. Prior to his departure, he had not registered a claim for land in the East Wairoa block in which he and his whanau had interests. The commander had obtained an assurance from the chief judge that the court would not sit until he and Makifora were available to attend the hearing. So what happened? 
Maki Whara returns to Auckland before the expiry of the six-month notice period required by the New Zealand Settlements Act to find that the Compensation Court had already sat to hear claims to the East Wairoa block. Despite repeated petitions to Parliament over 44 years, Anaru Makifora did not see the return of his ancestral lands before he passed away in 1927, aged 85. Frankly, in the, in the overall scheme of things, that's a really sad and appalling story. The remaining lands of Naitaiki Tamaki were alienated to the Crown and private purchasers through the 19th and 20th centuries. Naitaiki Tamaki were left virtually landless with insufficient land for their present and future needs. The loss of communal ancestral lands had a severe impact on the tribal structure, alienating many whanau and their descendants, not only from their lands, but also from their iwi identity. Mr Speaker, the Crown's apology for these acts and omissions which breach the Treaty of Waitangi will be enshrined in legislation through the proposed bill. Um, I say this every time and I feel embarrassed to say it, but I have to. It's not possible to compensate Naitaiki Tamaki fully for the loss suffered as a result of the Crown's acts and omissions, but we hope that the financial and commercial redress provided to Naitaiki Tamaki seeks to recognise those losses. The settlement will provide financial and commercial redress to the iwi of $12.7 million, including commercial and deferred selection properties. This redress recognises the economic loss suffered by Naitaiki Tamaki arising from breaches by the Crown of its treaty obligations. The financial and commercial redress is aimed at helping the iwi and providing uh, the iwi with resources to help them develop their economic and social well-being. The settlement will also provide cultural redress, including the vesting of 16 sites of cultural significance, $50,000 for cultural revitalisation. The cultural redress recognises those traditional historical cultural and spiritual associations of the iwi with places and sites owned by the Crown within Naitaiki Tamaki's primary area of interest. Can I conclude by thanking my ministerial colleagues, the Office of Treaty Settlement Officials, officials from other agencies, particularly Parliamentary Council, for their extensive input in making this settlement possible. Once again, I apologise that because of the various complexities associated with the Hauraki Collective Settlement. It hasn't been possible to introduce the legislation as quickly as I would have liked, uh, and uh, I know that the iwi have needed to take various steps. Uh, I, uh, but we're on the right path now. I'm sure that the Māori Affairs <coughs> Committee is really cognisant of the need to resolve uh, the committee stages of the bill as quickly as possible and get it back to the House uh, so that it can be passed very quickly in the new parliament. But I want to acknowledge uh, the representatives of Naitaiki Tamaki here today, thank them for being here, uh, thank them for their forbearance. I was going to thank them for their patience, but the response may be, <laughs> what patience, and uh, justifiably, but look forward to seeing the bill progress through all its remaining stages as quickly as possible. I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā koe, te māngai o te whare, kātiaki rā, tēnā tātou katoa.